Hey, what's up guys? My name is the channel. Welcome back to my OpenGL series. So, last time we talked about projection matrices and we basically, over the last few episodes, have gotten a math library into our application here that we're building in OpenGL. So today what I want to talk about is, I guess, the next step after the projection matrix. So we have projection matrices and specifically we implemented like an orthographic projection for our view if we just launch our program from last time so that we can see what we actually had. We managed to draw this Cherno logo kind of in the in a different position, not in the center, and at the correct aspect ratio by using an orthographic projection, which we provided over here in this line of code. So that's kind of one phase of it, the projection matrix, but there's also two other matrices that are fairly important when we're dealing with the transformation of geometry when we render it in a scene. So the first being projection, but then we also have something called a view matrix and we have something called a model matrix as well. And that, all of that gets multiplied together with our, with each vertex position to give us kind of the final position of the vertex in our actual screen, like on inside our window or in our kind of 2D projection that is on our computer screen. So again, Lots of theory behind this, which I probably will cover at some point, but what I want to do today is just kind of introduce the concept and actually show you guys how you can access it and what it's used for. Uh, and then you can kind of play around with that and hopefully learn it that way, because that's probably a better way of learning it than just studying a lot of theory and not doing anything. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Model view projection, MVP, or in the other, if you reverse it, PVM, I guess, but usually it's set as MVP, and you may have heard that term as well, MVP or MVP matrix. So that stands for model view projection matrix. And that is kind of the transformation pipeline that ha that goes through every vertex. Now I keep saying pipeline, but really what I mean is that each one of those letters MVP is a separate four by four matrix. And that, and all of those matrices get multiplied together in that order, model view projection. Now in OpenGL, since we deal with column major ordering, it's actually done in kind of reverse-ish, like if we were to write it out in, inside our shader code or inside our GLM code in C++ here, it would be projection times view times model. Whereas like in DirectX, in Direct3D, because they did deal with row major uh, ordering for matrices, it would actually be MVP, model view projection. And you'd actually have your vertex positions on the left side of that kind of equation. Not on the left side of the equation, but that would be kind of the first thing you multiply if you read left to right, whereas an OpenGL is reverse. So the fact that it's MVP doesn't necessarily define the order. Lots of stuff we could talk about here that we probably don't need to mention. But the idea is that we have these three matrices and they kind of define different things for our vertex positions. Because what happens in the end is we multiplied all the matrices together and we multiplied that matrix, that resulting matrix with our vertex position. And that vertex position is the vertex position of our geometry, which is stored inside our vertex buffer. And that kind of, all of that multiplication transforms that vertex into where it should be on our actual screen, on our computer screen. That's what this is all for. So we have the projection matrix, which we talked about last time, which was specifically for actually converting this kind of whatever space we choose to work with into normalized device coordinates, meaning we're converting from whatever space we're dealing with and whether that be orthographic or perspective into a negative one-to-one -one mapping in kind of every axis in X, Y, and Z. That's what the projection matrix is responsible for. Definitely check out that video if you haven't already. The model and the view matrix are something a little bit different. The view matrix, sometimes called the I matrix, is kind of the view of the camera. So it's a way for us to kind of simulate a camera, more or less. And then the model matrix is a way for us to basically simulate the model matrix. So the model being the model that we're actually drawing, so the vertex that we're drawing, and the matrix specifically is just a transformation of the model. So to put this into more simple terms, projection aside, because that just kind of defines like, I guess, what kind of space we deal with, the view matrix is the position, the rotation, scale, whatever of our camera. And then the model matrix is the position, there's the rotate, the transform. So the, the position, rotation, scale of our actual model that we're drawing of our object. So we have the object transform and we have the camera's transform. Now, 
It's important to understand that at the end of the day, these are just mathematical numbers. The fact that I've kind of given you this illustration of we have a camera, we have this model kind of transformation matrix, that's all kind of an illusion in the sense that you don't like you don't have to have a camera. You could just, I don't know, just you could just have your camera in the center at all times and just have the kind of model matrix and that will work as well because really these are just numbers and they all get multiplied together anyway. You could have another matrix that's like your secondary camera matrix or whatever. There's so many ways you could do this because it doesn't really matter. They're just, you're multiplying matrices together. You have to understand that. It's as simple as that. So the convention that we kind of deal with is we have a view matrix that is specifically supposed to represent our camera's kind of position and orientation. And then we have a model matrix which is supposed to represent our objects transform object being the thing that we're currently drawing because what will happen is we're going to multiply the projection matrix with the camera matrix with the model matrix with the vertex position and we'll take a look at that in a minute but conceptually i just want you to understand that what i'm introducing here are two different matrices the view matrix and the model matrix the view matrix is supposedly supposed to represent our camera position and orientation and the model matrix is supposed to represent our objects transform meaning by transform by transform and i probably will make a video specifically on this as well um teaching open gel is hard man okay <laughs> i'm going to make a video on that as well but transform specifically means uh kind of position rotation scale or translation i should say that's the word i was looking for it's been a long day man translation translation rotation scale trs uh, translation meaning the kind of the position, I guess, of our object, the rotation being the, what orientation is kind of rotated in, and then the scale being kind of how big or small it is. It doesn't have to be uniform scaling either. So it might, you might be able to change, like if it's a cube, you could make it a, like a rectangular prism or something like that. And we'll definitely get into that in the future as well. But that is the idea. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking because I'm feel like I'm just going to ramble on for another 18 hours. Let's just get into this and uh, see what we can do with this newfound knowledge. So at the moment, what we have is kind of our base vertex positions, which are over here. We've created a vertex, a sorry, a projection matrix that is an orthographic matrix that is kind of from zero to 960 and from zero to 540. So in other words, it's kind of a, a, a pixel space projection here because every unit is one pixel. Here are our vertex positions and those um, are just inside our vertex buffer. And what we're doing here, um, well, this result was just kind of me simulating that, that um, multiplication on the CPU side. But if you look at what our shader is doing, it's also doing that in the sense that it's taking our MVP, our model view projection matrix that we're passing in here and multiplying it with position. Now, if we take a look at what MVP actually is here, you can see that uh, what we actually pass in here is just this proj, right? We're just passing in that projection matrix. We're not actually, we don't have any kind of view matrix or model matrix. But what we're going to do now is we're going to add a view matrix. And what this is going to be is the position of our camera. So at this point, we need to decide, well, how do we want to move our camera? Maybe we want to translate our camera. We won't worry about rotation just to keep this simple for now. Let's maybe move our camera, I don't know, 100 units to the left. Now, here's a trick. What we're doing here is we're trying to move our camera. So let's kind of for a minute, for a brief minute, because I will have a separate video on cameras, for a brief minute, let's just think about what a camera is. Well, okay, there's no, there's not actually, like a camera doesn't actually exist. There's no such thing as a camera. So how would we simulate a camera? Well, let's just say we have an object like this phone over here, right? We have a camera here. So if I want to move the camera to the left, then the object would move to the right, technically speaking. So if I can't move the camera to the left, then the object kind of moves to the right. That's what happens. I, you probably can't see much from the thing. I probably should have just drawn a diagram, but that's kind of what I'm getting at. If you like, the ca there's no such thing as a camera in OpenGL. All we can really do real, really is just move geometry around. We can move vertices around. So to simulate a camera moving left, what we really need to do is move everything to the right. So it's kind of the reverse operation here. So what I'm going to do here is create a translation matrix, except since I want to move everything to the right 100 units, what I'm actually going to write here is a VEC3 where I'm just moving 
everything negative 100, so to the left, because that will kind of be like moving the camera to the right. And I'll just fill in zero for the other units here. And uh, let's see what else this wants. So I guess what we should really probably do here is actually just create a, uh, an identity view matrix, which would mean one of these, and then translate that matrix by just doing that. And I believe that should change it. Now it takes in a const, which is great. So we'll actually have to, what we could do, I guess, is probably end up constructing a identity matrix here and then assigning it to view like that. All right, cool. So that's kind of our view matrix. So now what we'll do is uh, this MVP thing will actually create a GLM map for MVP matrix, which will be that projection times the view now. So let's pass that into MVP here and hit F5 to run our program. All right, cool. And so the result here is that this channel logo has just moved 100 units to the left because what we've done is we've moved our camera to the right. And if we move our camera to the right, it means that everything else in our scene kind of moved to the left. And I've simulated that by just doing the reverse operation here because I'm typing in negative 100 here, which essentially ends up moving the object to the left, which again is a simulation of moving the camera to the right. So that's how that works. Obviously, if you write a camera class, you'll kind of, this kind of negation, you'll automate all that and the API will take care of that for you so you don't have to worry about that. But mathematically, that's how it works. Moving the camera to the left is actually just moving all the objects to the right. So with this same principle, because all we've really done here, I mean, you can't tell the difference. I've called it view matrix, but you can't tell the difference between us moving the camera to the left or us moving the object to the right. Same thing. So it's, again, purely a kind of way to visualize how this actually works. But mathematically, it's just, it's all the same. It's just numbers. So what we'll do now is we'll create this uh, model matrix. And I'll, again, translate the model somewhere. So we ended up translating this, uh, well, the camera, we ended up moving to the right. So what I'll do here maybe is move the model uh, up a bit. So maybe we'll say, we'll move it 200 to the right and 200 up. And so we should, it, but we should basically end up with our channel logo being closer to the to the to the center of the screen, and we'll multiply all these matrices together. So projection times view times model, hit F five, and you can see now we have the channel logo being moved another, you know, two hundred units up and two hundred units to the right. Okay, and that's what we end up with. Cool. So this resulting matrix here is what our MVP is model view projection. And again, the multiplication is kind of in reverse order. That's to do with the fact the memory layout of all the numbers, the fact that they're in column major, you can kind of think of reading matrix multiplication in OpenGL as right to left. So we multiply model with view with projection. That's just how it ends up working out because of the way that we've laid out our memory, because of the way that, that OpenGL actually expects it in the shader in the GPU, and also the way the GLM handles it for us because of that kind of specification by OpenGL. But anyway, that's what you see here. Three matrices multiplied together, which create the transformation for our vert for our actual vertices. That's it. Very simple. Camera multiplied with the transform of our object multiplied with that projection, which converts everything into normalized device coordinates. That is basically all the matrix multiplication you need to know if you're worried about positioning objects in a 3D or 2D world. That's it. That's all there is to know. Obviously, you can do more than just translation. I kind of just showed you a simple example. Now, what I want to do next time, because we've kind of touched on all this kind of model view projection stuff in this episode, which is awesome. Next time, I want to actually start introducing uh, perspective projection and maybe get into some 3D stuff. Now, because it's going to be really important for us to have some kind of way of controlling these parameters live, because I can't keep closing my application, changing the code, recompiling it and updating it, that's going to be really painful. And it's really hard for me to demonstrate anything like that. What I'm actually going to do is probably integrate IM GUI, which is a kind of a UI framework, um, really easy to use UI kind of layer that we can use for actually kind of having UI controls as part of our, our application, which we can use to modify variables while our application is running. It's kind of like a debug layer, really easy kind of UI to use. So we'll probably integrate that next time. Um, but other than that, we're just going to progress, keep going with this kind of math stuff and hopefully get into pers perspective projections soon and think about how we can render 
real world kind of objects on the screen, whether that be 3D or 2D, we might go back and forth between 3D and 2D, I haven't decided yet. But that is kind of the gist of this. Let me know what you guys thought of this whole model view projection thing. I am going to probably end up making more detailed videos about each concept, but I kind of like to make an overall video just covering, just introducing the topic first, because this is probably enough information for a lot of you to actually start doing this yourself and play around with it. And that's going to be probably the best way to learn. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. You can go ahead and help support this series by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge thank you as always to all the lovely patrons who make this series possible. It wouldn't be here without you. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.